Welcome, and thank you for joining me for Sanctuary Sunday School. Today's topic is Moses and the burning bush, and you can find this passage in Exodus, the third chapter. Now, this lesson starts a new unit. In our last unit, we took a look at the call of Deborah and Barak, and then it was Gideon, and then it was Jephthah, and then finally we had Samson, and that unit was called an urgent call. This one starts with Moses, and right off the bat, there's a huge difference. In all of those lessons, the scripture started with, and the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So each time that there was oppression in those lessons, it was brought on by sin and disobedience. This time it was not. The children of Israel were in Egypt because Joseph was sold into exile by his brothers, but he ultimately ended up saving his entire family from famine because he was in Egypt and he brought his entire family there so that they would not starve. And while they were there, they started to grow and multiply. And then Joseph died and the Pharaoh who knew Joseph died as well. And now we have a new Pharaoh and this Pharaoh was worried because these people are growing and it's more of them than it is of us. You know, what if they should rise up against us and try to attack us and overthrow us? What are we going to do? So this is where we see that God is going to call Moses because then he started to make them slaves and oppress them. And he started doubling their burden and making everything very, very hard. So here we see Moses is in Midian. Now, before he got there, Moses was definitely a Hebrew, and even his birth was miraculous. God saw fit to protect him because as the Pharaoh wanted to oppress or keep them from multiplying, he ordered them to kill all of the male children. So when Moses was born, he was supposed to be killed, but his mother had the wisdom to build an ark for him and hide him, and he was found by Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses was raised in the Pharaoh's house as a prince of Egypt, and he was a ruler. But then it came to a point where Moses got into trouble. He saw an Egyptian um, abusing an Israelite, and something in him rose up, and he killed the Egyptian. When he killed this Egyptian, he had to flee. It's a very long story, and I encourage you to go back into the book of Exodus and read the entire history of Moses, but he had to leave. And when he left, he ended up in Midian, and that's where he found his wife. But when there is a call on your life, there's absolutely no escape. So he's there, he's tending his flock, he's minding his own business, and he notices a bush. Now, of course, it's definitely not uncommon to see a bush on fire in a desert. I mean, it could be the heat, it could be anything, but this bush just kept burning and it burned and burned and did not consume. Typically, if you burn wood or bushes, they'll burn into cinders and you'll have ashes left, but this bush just kept burning and burning. So it got Moses' attention. He went over to see what was going on. As he approached the bush, he heard the voice of God call out to him and told him to take his shoes off because he was standing on holy ground. Now, in that culture, taking off your shoes was a sign of respect and humility. So Moses removed his shoes because he respected the authority and the power of God. And that's what God called Moses. And he told him, he said, um, I hear my people, Israel, they are suffering and I'm calling you to go deliver them. It's time. And so Moses's immediate response was, who am I? that I should go and deliver Israel. And I want to pause right here because sometimes that's how we are. When God calls us to do something great, your initial response is, why me? You know, who am I? Why are they going to listen to me? And that was Moses' reaction. But when you look at it, this is such a great illustration of the vision and the foresight and the planning and just the sheer divine power of God and how he's in control of or over every situation. See, Moses was raised in the palace with Pharaoh. Who better to defeat you than somebody that 
you educated, somebody who knows the ins and outs of what you're doing, who knows your house, someone who is on your level intellectually, emotionally, and understands what you're thinking and can kind of anticipate your next move. That's the kind of opponent, opponent who is the most difficult to defeat. So even though Moses did not see how he would be able to go against Pharaoh, his entire life had been a preparation for him to go against the house of Pharaoh and deliver the children of Israel, which is exactly what God told him to do. And this is such a powerful lesson about how your life is really not your own. You belong to God. You may not be called to deliver a nation, but you may be called to deliver your home, your family. You may be that one person in your church to turn things around and make things better. And that's the position that we want to be in. Listen, be in a position where you can hear the call of God. This unit teaches us about how God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt, from the bondage and the slavery and the oppression. And it starts with this lesson with God calling Moses to be a leader. And again, this is such a great lesson for us. If you are available and if you're able to recognize the hand of God in your life, you will definitely be prepared when God calls you. Answer the call.